Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining tonight's webinar. My name is Jasmina Alajic, and I'm an Accounts Manager here at Erconia EMEA. Tonight's webinar will be hosted by Dr. Brandon Brock, where he will delve into the cutting edge world of laser treatments and their transformative potential in clinical practice. Dr. Brock will share his comprehensive insights on the intricacies of utilizing the emerald laser, providing you with nuanced understanding of its capabilities and the way it can revolutionize patients' outcome. For those of you who don't know Dr. Brock, well, Dr. Brock is a multi-licensed practitioner in Dallas, Texas, who holds a doctorate in family nursing practice from Dukes University and a doctorate in chiropractic from Parker University. He is a clinical educator for functional neurology seminars at BTB Health Systems, Brain Chat, Functional Medicine Meetings, and Dr. Brock Seminars. Dr. Brock earned his stem cell fellowship from the American Academy of Anti-Aging and Medicine, A4M. He's currently working on PhD in cardiovascular diseases. We will be happy to assist you further at the end of the webinar, which for your reference will be recorded and sent out to all the attendees. I would like to alert you to the question and answer box on the right hand side of the screen, which you can use to type in your question to Dr. Brock. We will be addressing those questions at the end, but please type them in as we go along. I hope I did say this correct, Dr. Brock, about your yeah. bio. <laughs> thank okay, you without... so much. That's fantastic. <laughs> okay. Well, without... I just want to say thank you. Over to you. No, I just thanks to everybody for being here. Um, it is, listen, I'm in a you know, Dallas, Texas, but I love everybody across the pond. I wish I was there right now doing <laughs> this. Um, but I love talking about lasers. I really enjoy Erconia because of the research base that they have. You know, in America, all of what we call the FDA clearances or, you know, the government saying that what we're doing is efficacious. You know, we have about 21 out of the 24 or 25 FDA clearances. We did the research for those. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's millions of dollars, which is one of the reasons why as a researcher and as a clinician, I decided that I wanted to really be a part of this company because they, they put their money up and not many companies do that. And everybody else that does laser-based therapy, and I, and I really want to make this very clear, a lot of other companies that are using either red or other, I guess, colors of laser, which I, I can get into what those colors mean, they're saying they're FDA clear because they're using our research and they're coming in on our, on our coattails. And so what's funny is we use their sham or we use their technology as our sham and our research studies, meaning we do our laser and we use their LED, non-chromatic, you know, types of lasers as the comparative laser for what we use. So it's just a fantastic time to talk about lasers. I'm going to go slow, but talk about what we do in our clinic. And uh, really, it's just a super blessing to get to be here. I can't even believe that I get to be able to talk to all of the practitioners that are out there of all types. And I hope there's many types out there. Some of the material you may grasp and it may mean something to you. Some of it may not, but just enjoy all of it. And we have the notes to disperse. And at the end, hopefully we'll have a Q and A session. I'll try to get through this as expeditiously as possible. However, allow you know, time at the end uh, and not talk too fast so that people are, you know, scrambled. Um, I am thankful to Erconia for, again, letting me do this. Um, I am thankful to Simon and his staff for allowing me to be a part of this. It's always wonderful to be a part of uh, where my ancestral heritage comes from. Um, and that is, you know, 
over in Europe. I, I love this. So without further ado, I'm going to jump into this. Um, just a few things about myself. I do practice in Dallas, Texas, and I am practicing in internal medicine, and I deal with chronic illness, but I also deal with weight loss, and I deal with not just weight loss, but I deal with how people feel about themselves, and I think that's so important. Um, in a day and time where people need to feel better about themselves, I utilize this laser as a way to allow them to see themselves in a better light. And so we do add on some things to the laser, but that doesn't mean that the laser as a standalone doesn't work. We just do everything we can to enhance uh, improvement. And I will share some of that. So I will share both like what you can do with the laser and how it works and what you can do in your clinic very, very simplistically to work together. And then some other things outside of that that can either lower results or make it to where you can examine certain things and enhance the improvement. I think all of that's really, really important because as we study this laser from an objective perspective and from an observational perspective, it's very important that we report these things so that clinicians can say, hey, look, these are the same things that I see what can I do to get better results? Because ultimately we want good results. And we have gotten to the point now to where we are getting, uh, the vast majority of our patients are getting what they want and they're not losing muscle and they are gaining tone and they are gaining the, you know, the capacity to have the, the body morphology or content that they want. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today. I, again, without being redundant, appreciate all of you being here. I, again, wish we could do this live, but it's always nice to be able to rewatch these things. And, uh, you know, it's really good. I have done lots of education with Erconia. I've done lots of research with Erconia. Um, I am finishing up a PhD, hopefully, um, in the near future. And, I've done training really in the world of neurology, orthopedics, and overall, you know, components in regards to weight loss and, and, and body composition. And the reason why I do that is because we have people that need knee replacements and they got to lose weight. Or we have people that are going in for cosmetic procedures that are very expensive and our prices are cheaper. We have people that go in for various procedures that have a significant amount of invasiveness where they have to make incisions and do things that can puncture the overall abdominal cavity. And we would rather try to do something to where they don't have to go through that. And they can use something like a laser where they're, in, in our studies, there was no significant side effects. There was no people that were suffering and there was no danger, there was no harm and there was no death. And I think that's very important to understand when you compare that to other types of modalities. The other modalities are things like liposuction. And we know that that is a dangerous procedure to an extent. Um, you can puncture into the abdominal cavity. And we also know that you're removing fat cells. And we don't like to remove tissue because removing tissue is something that is not necessarily natural. Because if you gain body fat back, it won't go to those areas where the tissue was removed. It'll just go to other areas. So now you'll look dysmorphic. There's other types of, you know, procedures, cool sculpting and other lasers. Some of these other lasers are powered up so high that they do have some deleterious effects, especially on protein denaturization. And then we also have other procedures like cool sculpting, which I don't necessarily have a huge problem with, but you have to be very technically sound to do this in a way to get a good even distribution and not create again tissue damage and we don't create tissue damage and i want to make sure that that is something that everybody understands we're not using a modality that creates tissue damage and i'll show you how that works and i know that many of you know that but i'm going to go through it again anyway show you some of the literature and then make sure that you know you understand that so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen, take myself off so that I can see my own slides.
you've uh, seen my face and we will go from there. So do you have any problems seeing my screen right now? Okay, let's hope not. Okay, so, so again, uh, what's that? All good for now. I can see your screen perfectly. All I'm good now. guessing everybody else can Perfect. see it. Perfect. So Right. The notes, I do have a, uh, if anybody ever really wants to see where I'm at, and, and not that this is really all that important, I do have a, you know, a scanning code you can use with your phone over here on the right side. It'll take you to the clinic that I'm at. Um, and so I just do that because it's easier to get a hold of me. And again, I just want to make sure that I reiterate that there is a Q&A session at the end of this. Okay, so let's move onward. This is the disclaimer that we have to give in the States, and that is is please don't do anything outside of your scope. It doesn't matter where in the world you're at. Please make sure that you utilize all of Arconia's technology within the scope that you have, okay? If you need supervision, use supervision and and, and you know and so forth. Now, in Texas, I am part of what's called the Pan SAC count, uh, Council. And so for the state of Texas, there's an autoimmune encephalitis uh, council. None of the information that I'm going to be giving you will reflect on their opinions. And that's just something legally that I have to say. None of the nutritional products or labs um, do I have any kind of uh, investment in. The only thing that I'm a part of is I'm an educator for Erconia and what they do. So Anyway, as we go through that, I just want to make sure that it's fair enough that we give the disclaimers. Okay, so right out of the gate, if anybody gets an emerald or if they get green technology for the utilization of any source, we have made various components of documentation. And if anybody gets that, I will ensure you that you will get this documentation. And that documentation includes a patient procedure guide, as you can see right here. And we make a dedication to the protocol so that people are held accountable. And I think it's important that people understand what we expect from them. This is not just a dedication to the protocol, but it's also an informed consent in regards to what they're receiving. So we'll be more than happy to give that as well, okay? And you can get this in a Word document and you can put all of your clinic information on it and make sure that you're, it's not just about following law, it's about common practice, ethics, and so forth. And then my wife, who is my health coach in my practice, she has made something called the Emerald Dietary Components. And if you want to do any dietary consulting, we will also give you that as well. And you can also get a hold of Tara, who is my health coach. And in America, that's the person who will deal with diet and some of the habits that people go through. And I will be more than happy to answer questions. I want to help all of you as practitioners. I understand if you spend money on technology that you demand, um, a certain level of support. Erconia, especially in Europe, has fantastic support, but if there's anything that we can do, we'll be more than happy to help that out. So these are not the complete documents, but it's actually just sort of a, a snapshot of what we can actually give you. There's a, about 15 pages of really good information that comes with, if you get emerald or green technology, or really any other technology that Arconia has to offer, we'll be more than happy to help you out and make sure that you can utilize that technology so that, number one, you can make money. Number two, you can help patients, which I think is the most important thing. And then you can be educated so that you know what you're talking about when you talk to patients. So this information is available for review. I usually don't give this, but I wanted to make sure that you understand that we're here for you not just educating you, not just trying to sell something to you or provide something to you, but we're trying to make you a well-rounded practitioner. Now, I love this slide so much. Um, 
and I'll draw on slides a lot. So you'll have to kind of give me a little leeway here, but what does low level laser do? Well, it increases blood supply through nitric oxide. And, and, and this is one of the many things that either red, violet or green does. It, it increases blood supply to tissues that are being damaged. Now, we have to also increase blood supply to fat. This is one of the things that the other technology does not do, and that is it, we're not talking about just removing fat, but we're also talking about increasing blood supply and increasing blood flow away from adipocytes or fat cells so that you can get all of the stuff that's within the fat cell out. So the nitric oxides, there's three of them. There's the ENOS, which is the endothelial, which causes vasodilation. There's the INOS, which is the inducible nitric oxide. That's the negative one. Low-level low laser from Merconia really suppresses free radical damage within the body. So not only are we changing morphology or shape of the body, but we're also reducing the amount of oxidative damage within the cells surrounding it, which is completely novel and different than any other technology. And then also with green, we have NNOS. And if anybody shines a green laser over the brain, it increases protection of neuronal cells. So we take pride in that. Ion concentration is not a big deal, but we do change growth factors. Um, so that especially with green laser, what we're finding is, is there's a significant impact in regards to bone density. So when you're really doing stuff to decrease the size and the content of fat cells, we're actually increasing inadvertently, especially in that lower back region where most people want to you know, utilize fat loss, especially around the abdomen there's a high probability that we're increasing bone density in the lumbar spine and people that get osteopenia or osteoporosis, they need that. Mitochondrial signaling, we give patients the ability to have more energy. And I'll talk about that more in a little bit. And then we keep cells from dying, but we keep the fat cells alive. And then the biggest thing is we increase energy. So when we empty the content of fat cells the triglycerides and the fat that comes out is utilized as energy. It's not just destroying a cell and sucking it out or destroying it to where it's never gonna be there again. We empty the contents, we remove the toxins, and then we utilize the triglycerides as energy so that that patient can have, you know, thrive. But in other cells, we actually activate the electron transport chain so that we have more energy. So. This applies to more than just what we're talking about today. It talks about green, violet, and red, but it's really exciting for me to talk about laser technology, especially low level laser technology that doesn't require a lot of power. With Erconia, we have the perfect amount of electron voltage or electron power, but we don't have to increase the wattage or heat in order to accumulate the best results. In fact, if we increase a significant amount of heat, if this is the skin, and this is like a high level infrared, it'll hit the skin and it causes water molecules to vibrate, which decreases the amount of penetration and increases heat. However, Erconia has made a low level component with good electron voltage, which has good penetration. And this is supported by the literature, and I'm a very literature-minded person. Like, does the literature support this or not? With the amount of wattage that we use and the you know, amount of power that we use and electron volts that we use, we get a significant amount of penetration, which can get down to those deeper tissues, especially fat cells. You know, when somebody may have six, seven, eight, nine inches of fat and we have to penetrate all the way down. We feel like our waveform, which is you know, monochromatic. So our waveforms look like this. And it's not an LED, which may scatter. 
So when something scatters, you have to really increase the power of it in order to get an effect. Whenever we have a single monochromatic beam that is being generated to a specific area, we don't have to have as much power. We have the appropriate amount of electron voltage to get the penetration, and we don't have heat, but it reaches the target tissues that we need. And I think that that is really probably one of the coolest things that, you know, I've dealt with in regards to research in regards to Erconia. So I spend a little bit of time on this slide just so that you can understand what is the differences in low level lasers. If you have a high powered infrared laser, it's really just going to, and especially if they feel heat, it's going to get a lot of surface water molecule vibration, which lowers the penetration. We do not have heat, and we have significant studies that show body signatures of internal tissues that shows that it's reaching deeper penetration. So that is a difference in technology, which I think is important to understand. So I love this slide. You got a reference right over here with the DOI number. You can always just put the DOI number in Google and you can look for um, the information on this paper and it's fantastic. Now, I just wanted to throw this in there real quick because Erconia has really done a lot of research in looking at the violet waveform, the green waveform, and the red waveform. And this is the electron transport chain. So we know that information from various forms of physiological mechanisms, whether it be the glycolytic pathway or oxidative stress or whatever the case may be, we have to shuttle electrons through this so that we can ultimately reach ATP synthase and get the appropriate amount of energy that we need for the process that we're trying to, to, to accomplish. Green is very interesting because right around the 532 nanometer waveform or right around the 520 nanometer, you take these first two complexes, there's four complexes in the electron transport chain, these are the rate limiting mechanisms. Complex four is what goes straight to ATP synthase. Green connects the first two to the last two. So green is really the final frontier in regards to making the electron transport, you know, the electron transport chain whole. And we utilize that because it helps with so many things. And this is one of the components in regards to helping with adipocytes and adipocytes i'll just utilize i'll just say is fat cells fat cells from now on i don't want to offend anybody by saying the word fat but it's easier to say than adipocytes so when we say controlling fat cells green does the job red does a good job as well but it doesn't do as good of a job as green in regards to what we've looked at in regards to our studies so many of you have seen this and you know, one of the first things that we wanted to do is say, okay, is there depth of penetration? Because if there's not depth of penetration, how are we going to get down to some of the visceral fat or the fat around organs and so forth? One of the cool things, and I'll show you some information here in a second, by looking at some of the biometrics, we actually decrease visceral fat and other types of gynoid fat, especially around females that can, you know, really create kind of a bulging abdomen or an increase of size in the hips. We get down not just to the superficial fat, but we get down to the deeper sub muscle, you know, fat tissue or what we would call brown fat. We get down to that and we're actually cleared to reduce that as well. So really what happened is early on, there were people that were doing liposuction. There were practitioners that were doing liposuction and they were doing laser-based therapy to also help with fat. And they realized that when they were doing liposuction, some of the patients, when they were doing the liposuction, instead of the fat coming out in clumps, it was coming out as like, almost like a liquid. And they figured out that the patients that were getting laser-based therapy, the fat was coming out as a liquid. And that's because if this is a fat cell, the internal contents are dumping out, and then that is being sucked out, and it almost looks like a clear liquid, rather than just pulling out chunks of fat. That led 
to one study and then other studies. And what we found out is, is that fat opens up an adipopore and the contents of this fat dumps out or the contents of the cell dumps out. And then we can allow that to be mobilized so that these cells now shrink, thus your overall circumference shrinks. But the one thing that's important is, is that it leaves this cell intact. It doesn't destroy it. We don't want to destroy any tissue. We're not in the business of ablation. We're not in the business of sucking things out. If you do gain fat back, it goes back to a normal distribution so that you don't look dysmorphic or different than you did before. I think it's important that we actually include some of the research articles that really denoted or supports what green laser therapy and red laser therapy has done for fat and you know, for body circumference in the first place. So here is actual evidence in the literature. And this is, I believe, from their studies from Mayo Clinic and John Hopkins. Many of you don't understand what those may be, but they're very prestigious institutes in the United States of America where there's high levels of level one research being done where there's randomization and there's controlled studies. And that's how we got the Federal Drug Administration clearance for what we do as a medical device. Now, you can see right here that this is a adipocyte or a fat cell, and then this is a cluster of fat cells. And so we want to get these out so that the internal contents can come out and the overall circumference reduces. Now, one thing I want to state is inside these fat cells you can accumulate some toxins some hormones and some other things so i'll talk about some of the binders that we do use they're very simple you don't have to do them but we do use vibration our vibe plates so that it gets the triglycerides away from those fat cells so there's not reabsorption if there's reabsorption obviously you're not going to get the results that you want so vibration is good also, hydration is very, very, very beneficial. So drinking water or giving IVs helps with moving the contents away from reabsorption. And then sometimes we use pneumatic devices or lymphatic massage to get some of this away from these fat cells so that we don't regain entry back into the adipocyte and it goes back to where it was. So there is skill and there is technique in this. And we've learned that within a 72 hour time frame, we need to remove these contents or else there might be reabsorption. And I think that this will play, I'm not sure, let's take a look. But this is what these fat cells actually look like when they're emptied. You can see almost like a honeycomb kind of expression where it's emptied out. And this is really done with the laser under electron microscopy. And then these are the fat cells that have been emptied because the adipopore is opened. The contents have emptied out. They've been utilized as energy. And the patient feels a little bit better, has more energy, is losing that circumference and feeling better. But in the meantime, we're not destroying tissue and we don't really have to worry about the side effect profile or the invasiveness or any kind of deleterious effects that might be happening. So Number one, it's safe. Number two, it's efficacious. Number three, it's peer review. And I think that's important for everybody to understand. If you're gonna purchase any kind of technology, there needs to be literature behind it. And you need to make sure that you're not destroying that person's bot. Um, sometimes that's obviously in, in certain types of procedures, it's necessary to, to change the body composition or to change what that tissue looks like. But this is technology that doesn't do that. So you can rest assured that the process here is safe. We didn't have any really contraindications or any complications in our studies when we were actually validating green or validating red. And I think, let's see here. This is some of the videos and I, I'm trying to get back. Anyway, this is electron microscopy showing um, the fat 
actually under electron microscopy, emptying out of a single adipocyte and then emptying out of a cluster. You can see this looks like a cluster of grapes, a cluster of adipocytes. And again, important because we have to be able to do that in order to reduce the overall circumference. So here's a patient, we use a body scanning device and this is what she looked like before. And I want you to look right in this area. And I want you to look at the depth of this crease and then also overall breast tissue. So right here, she has a reduction in the circumference of her hips. She also has changes in her arms and we weren't even aiming for that, okay? This was over about a five or about a four to six month period. And the green is what she is now and the red is what she was before. Now, what's really interesting is we've observed is this. Head forward posture now actually becomes better. So we're actually increasing posture in almost all of our patients. It's an observation, it's not a, a study per se, but we're making a big difference in that. The other thing I want you to notice is the change in her neck size. We really didn't aim this on her neck or chin, but she changed. And I'll show you real-time pictures of this patient in a second. Now, these are cross sections. So if I was to cut you in half, this is looking at the red circumference is what she was before, the green is what she is after. So in the chest, she lost 3.6 inches. And then all the way down to the areas that we were actually aiming for, which is really the hip and the waist. In the waist, she lost 3.8 inches. And this software that we utilize, and it's you know a laser beam guided type of thing where we're not using, and we're doing this for research purposes, for future studies, but the cool thing is, is that it adds it all up and it gives you a total. The thing that I'm telling you is, is that the green gets absorbed and it changes things even in the areas that are not, where the beam is not directed, which is crazy. We didn't really understand that at first, but what we found out is the red blood cell will accumulate the light and then it'll go through the system and disperse and have an effect on other tissues not near the area where the beam is being generated. That's crazy for us. We didn't understand that, but we found out that hips were changing. We weren't necessarily focused on that. And the areas that we were focused on, there were greater changes than the areas that we were not focused on, but there were still global changes. And I love this because it's great visual feedback to the patient. You can see right here, this patient lost 18.5 inches. So right here is where we really started accelerating what they were doing. So between August and January, so that's August, September, October, November, December, January, so within a six month time period, the patient really lost about 18 inches. And this shows really where they lost, you know, some of their inches. And they did lose chest, waist, and abdominal waist as well. And this also shows the torso, what they did. And what's interesting is we didn't aim this at the neck or the arms, but they lost inches there as well. They didn't lose it as much in the forearm, but they did lose some of that tricep fat and that bicep fat, and they did lose some of that neck fat that, that I just showed you. We did not aim this at the neck. Now, again, it shows the legs. Most females, and I'm, I'm saying females, males too, but with females, we have thigh, and then we have mid-thigh, and we have calf. And you can see right here that we lost a significant amount of thigh inches but there was, we weren't aiming it there. So the green laser is not only site specific, but it's systemic specific. And that is much different than liposuction. It's much different than cool sculpting and getting a systemic effect is something that we've been studying 
And we've been using that and looking at that in regards to violet and red as well. But the biggest thing I want you to understand here is look at this 18.5 inches in this patient. She is a totally different person. And I'll show you pictures of before and after in real time as well. Total weight was 19 pounds. So she lost inches, but she maintained the hardness of her muscles and she actually kept strength. So she lost 3.6% 3, 3 of her body fat. In her fat mass, she lost 11.4 pounds of fat mass. And her lean mass changed and actually went up. And her body fat ranking went from average to fit. So this person is now fit. They haven't been fit in 30 years. So this is really, really important because we're changing weight we're changing composition, we're changing body fat percentage, they're increasing strength, she was exercising, she was eating the right way, so there is education. I want you to understand there has to be education in your program. If there's not education in your program, you need to talk to us so that we can teach you how to do that. It's not very difficult. But we didn't remove tissue, we didn't distort her body, she still got stronger, she didn't have flappy underarms. She got tighter arms, a tighter chest, a leaner waist, leaner thighs, and a leaner face and neck, but did not look sick. Now, these uh, are some of the areas that are all Brandon for um, uh, cutting you off now, because I've got one question now from uh, one of the attendees, which is specific to this patient, what we are talking about. And uh, she's asking how many sessions is done on this patient to obtain these results? Yeah, this patient had anywhere, I think they had around 16 sessions. Around and 16 sessions. Okay, yeah. Perfect. And what were no, the and that, 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 sessions? Was it once a week or a twice a week protocol? We were doing this once a week. Okay. Now, we would typically recommend twice a week, but this patient wanted to do once a week. Great. So, a, a, a great question. So, and, and I'll get to a protocol, my, my protocols at the, towards the end, but it's, it's, it's really important that people understand how often are you going to use this? We don't use it more than twice a week because of the 72 hour time frame where there can be reabsorption. We don't really want to do it one day after another because it's just doing the same thing that's already been done. Yeah. Okay. Thank so you. I think that that's really super important to highlight. So thank you for interjecting on that. Now look at this. These are the areas that don't budge, even with diet. And that's the subcutaneous fat. I mean, tremendous 23.9 percent loss this makes that protruding belly and that gynoid and android fat look at the gynoid fat loss this is what makes you know female hips and a female belly protrude we're you you can't do liposuction through a muscle into this fat i want i want to say that again you can't go through the muscle and go down into submuscular visceral and gynoid fat and remove it it just doesn't happen we have clearance for that and we are seeing that in all of our studies a 21.3 percent loss in gynoid fat mass which is to me tremendous this is almost this is one of those things that with diet and exercise alone doesn't change, especially postmenopausal in females, or what we would cause, you know, we we would call postandropause. So here she is in July, here she is in August, and now here she is in January. And the one thing I like to look at is we'll call it the boob to belly ratio, and then you know right here you see this reducing compared to this, the depth of the rear reducing significantly. However, she still has a derriere. And then of course, the width of the hips has changed significantly, especially right around this area of the upper trochanters. 
really nice stuff. And she's actually starting to see some abdominal musculature in her body. And she's like, wow, you know, this patient's in her 60s. And she's like, I, I look like I did maybe when I was in college. And, and, and she was very, very happy with it. And she's an average patient. We see this in a lot of patients. And you can see her right here. And I want you to look at the size of her face. And then here she is now looking at the size of her face and look at that beautiful structured waistline whereas right here she was trying to disguise her waist with baggier clothing her legs are beautiful for her age she's of course a beautiful individual everything about her has changed her personality her vitality the confidence that she has in herself she is absolutely transformed just by a few things that we have done. And when you do this to a patient, they have a better quality of life. They are more healthy. They love themselves a little bit more because they like what they see in the mirror. And not only that, we're finding that the lab markers that we are looking at, especially in regards to glucose and cardiovascular, they're improving. So, we may be adding years to her life in regards to longevity and those things are being studied right now so this is that patient in a real life picture and i just want you to be able to see this because it's one thing to see an avatar it's another thing to see a real patient well, this is really interesting and i got this from some other individuals so some of the things that we do check and we've been doing this for research purposes and eventually we'll probably get enough beta analytical analysis information to do a longitudinal study, but testosterone, what is it doing? Estradiol, progesterone, DHEA, and cortisol. So over here, when you see your patients that have really fat on the chest and triceps, it might be testosterone related, okay? Science really doesn't support it, but when we're looking at some of the biosignatures and some of the observations, wow, testosterone in regards to fat and triceps, okay? Estrogen. Estrogen is huge in postmenopausal female. You can have estrogen dominance or an estrogen depletion. And this is around the hips and the thighs, okay? Stress. Those that are under stress will have excess level of cortisol not because of adrenal burnout but because of adrenal maladaptation this is your stomach or belly fat so we have estrogen around the thighs we have cortisol around the belly um interestingly enough we've been looking at some growth hormone components and these are the individuals that have more fat around their knees and calves everybody wants to know about the thyroid and this is not the waist, but this is up around the rib cage. So when you start to see thyroid patterns, we start to see fat storage on the rib cage. And that's around the anterior rib cage all the way around the back. And the reason why I give you this is because different people have different body shapes. And when you look at them, you can start to say they have fat around the rib cage, they have fat around the arms, they have fat around the hips, they have fat around the abdomen what would that correlate in regards to their overall physiology the last thing which is the most important thing is insulin insulin resistance is the number one cause of metabolic syndrome it's the number one cause of inflammation and it's the cornerstone of most inflammatory diseases and it gives you love handles and i challenge you to grab the skin on a patient's back grab it and pull it and you will find most fat on the back. It is absolutely astounding. This is why this patient right here, her insulin stabilized and she lost size in her chest, not because her breasts shrank, but because her back fat changed because of insulin and it reinforces insulin's regulation on cortisol. So as we did this, what's interesting is we didn't do any hormone treatment on her, even though she's postmenopausal, but we started seeing changes in the measurements and the biometrics of these. 
this is the stuff that people really want to know. Why are they not losing fat on their arms? Why are they not losing fat on their thighs or hips? Why is it so much on their stomach? Why is it around their lower legs versus their proximal legs? Why is it over their rib cage and their upper part of their body looks much bigger and distorted? Why is it around their love handles and why is it around their back? We have discovered that these are some of the hormones that are involved. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to be an expert in hormone therapy. But what it means is, is that the green light has had an impact on some of these areas and some of these hormones. And we've measured that the laser changes the hormone composition of some of these patients. We didn't expect that. We expected, okay, if you want to change testosterone, we have to do therapy, testosterone therapy. We didn't know that a laser would actually change the hormone composition. What we're finding is, is that the laser is helping out with hormone replacement and hormone replacement or hormone levels will have an impact on the distribution of the way fat or adipocytes are distributed across your body. I thought this was super important. The only reason why I put prolactin on here is because if this is increased, it can cause excessive lactation in men. If testosterone is converting into prolactin, it can decrease libido significantly, okay? Progesterone helps with sleep tremendously. Estradiol and testosterone, I talked about those. Just for those of you that are doing hormone replacement, I do not use estrogen-based therapy unopposed. I always use a progesterone version and I use a micronized version of progesterone rather than a medroxy version. And I always look at stress and cortisol. If somebody's stressed out, they may not lose their size. If somebody's in menopause, they may not lose their size. If somebody has insulin resistance and their estrogen is turning into testosterone, you may see a distribution that is very specific to that patient. This is a very telling slide. I don't know how to get any more specific in regards to looking at a patient and looking at the distribution of their fat and looking at where they are and saying, this could be cortisol, it's stress. This could be estrogen, it's menopause or estrogen dominance. This is testosterone. That's influenced by insulin. And insulin controls cortisol and it looks at love handles and the back. This is a beautiful slide and it's looking at the combination between hormone and laser and what laser does to hormone and what hormone can do with laser. And it does not mean that you have to become a bioidentical hormone expert. What I'm saying is, is that the laser is having an impact on those hormones. If you can do both, great. That's, that's fantastic. But if you can't, we're finding uh, observationally that the laser is making a difference, not just on the numerical values, but the numerical values and the way those numerical values of those hormones distribute across the body. Beautiful slide, love it. Now, thyroid, I just wanted to tell you real quick, if somebody has a very high TSH, which means they have a very low thyroid, you need to correct that before you do any laser-based therapy. So a thyroid panel needs to be done. Now, these are all the things that I include in my thyroid panel. But just going back right here, you know, thyroid hormone affects fat storage around the rib cage, which is very, very prevalent, you know, around the rib cage, around the back. And remember that thyroid hormone can also affect your cholesterol and thyroid hormone can also affect your insulin. So what we're finding is people that have hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's where there's autoimmune thyroiditis, they're getting fat storage around their rib cage, around their back, and around their love handles. The patient that I just showed you, she did do emerald-based therapy, but she also had hypothyroidism, and it was simply corrected with medication and nutrients. And the nutrients that we utilized were just simple magnesium, iodine, selenium, CoQ10, and iron status if needed. Now, I did give you a good reference that shows you what each nutrient does to the thyroid. 
So you don't always have to give medication. Sometimes you can just give the supplements, make a big difference in the thyroid, and as a result, you change fat around the rib cage and fat around the back and love handles. So it doesn't always take medication. Sometimes it's a couple of nutrients along with the laser. But you have to be able to look at the patient and say, this is what they look like, this is where the fat is, this is how it's accumulating, and this is their body type. And when you do that and you get good at it, you can become amazing with this tool, okay? So these are just things, again, the reason why I look at quantitative thyroglobulin sometimes is because we do often use peptides, and peptides are a contraindication in thyroid cancer. And all thyroid cancers will increase your quantitative thyroglobulin. So if we're going to do peptides, we do quantitative thyroglobulin. 80% of hypothyroidism is due to high, you know, Hashimoto's. So we look at TPO and TG antibodies. Doctors who are treating hypothyroidism off of TSH, here's what I would tell you, them, they, or whoever it is that's doing it. It's dangerous. It's not scientific. There's 22 different patterns of hypothyroidism, and you're only looking at a few. Quit looking at TSH only. Okay, TSH can be normal, but you don't have good conversion from T4 to T3, and there's a lot of other things. That's why we look at T4 levels. The best patients have good T3 and low reverse T3 and they do not have antibodies to TPO or to TG. Selenium decreases Hashimoto's. CoQ10 allows for function, and magnesium and iodine allow for the interplay of different components. You might want to take a look at this slide or read this paper. If you have a bad thyroid, it's going to lower the results of any therapy you use, whether it be our laser, green laser, red laser, infrared laser, cool sculpting, liposuction, whatever the case may be, if you have a bad, a, a bad thyroid, that's been, that, that has been setting them up for this problem in the first place. So thyroid is really number one, other sex hormones are number two, and then stress hormones are number three. Now, the other thing that we measure, and I think it's really important, is to understand leptins and adiponectins. So your fat, when it gets bigger, is going to make leptins to go up to the brain, and it says, hey, stop eating. But the problem is, is that we get leptin resistance. And so when we get leptin resistance, we want to eat more, but we're getting bigger. And as the leptins go up and you eat more, it goes into joints and those joints become inflamed and now you have joint pain from your own fat. And as your leptins go up, your adiponectins, which comes from fat, goes down. Adiponectins protect you from inflammation. So if your leptins are going up and you're getting resistant, your leptins should go up with fat. But if your brain starts saying, I don't like you, I'm going to be resistant, you'll keep making those leptins. And when you do that, your joints are going to hurt. And then eventually your adiponectins are going to go down. And what's going to happen is it's going to increase your chances for cardiovascular disease, for atherosclerosis, for type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome. This is the reason why when we would shrink fat cells and empty their contents, their lipid panels changed, and all of their sugar or insulin panels changed as well. Fantastic. So when leptins go down, we get happy, their joint pain gets better. When adiponectins go up, they do much better in regards to their lipid panels. They have a lower probability of cardiovascular disease. Now, I'm not saying that this laser is approved for treating cardiovascular disease, but what I am saying is observationally, we're seeing some very cool stuff. Most labs will measure leptins and adiponectins. C-peptide measures insulin. Free insulin measures insulin at that moment, 
And then of course we look at a lipid panel as well to make sure that adiponectins are doing what they're supposed to do to lipids. A lot of people can come off their cholesterol medication. It's been fantastic. These are not things that we typically use it for, but what we're observing. Now, these are some references you can look at. Um, if your pancreas is making insulin, um, you can end up getting insulin resistance if you're making too much insulin and you get inflammation. If that happens, you end up getting leptin resistance, which we know can make you more hungry and can make your joints hurt. With the green laser, we're finding that insulin resistance is going down, blood sugar is going down, A1C is going down, inflammatory C-reactive protein is going down, and overall the patient is feeling better. So we are super happy with what we're seeing so far. So what is C-peptide, if you're gonna measure this, and insulin, what does it look at? It's gonna look at if you have type two diabetes. It's gonna look at it, because insulin resistance will go up, and if you're resistant, if your souls are saying, look, we don't like you, insulin, there's too much, then the utilization of your glucose goes down, and you start to get diabetic, and the sugar turns into triglycerides, and that makes you more obese. So we look at that, and it's something that we measure. We've met, we have been measuring it as part of our studies, and we found that insulin resistance has dropped significantly, and that has the probability of increasing the lifespan significantly as well. So we use really C-peptide to look at beta cells in the pancreas and looking at insulin. Insulin resistance can cause several things. It can cause inflammation. It can cause your HDLs to go down. It can cause your aldosterone to fluctuate. So sodium fluctuates so that you retain more water. And a lot of people won't lose size just because they're retaining fluid. And it also changes your platelet aggregation so that you don't have as many clots. So insulin resistance is a big deal in regards to lipids, glucose control, fluid volume and inflammatory components that will make all kinds of water just accumulate in extracellular compartments, which will make people look bigger and less dry. In, I guess, a bodybuilding world, we would say the person looks wet, they don't look dry, meaning you don't see the details of their muscles. Okay, so we measure those things and we're finding the C-peptide is improving with green laser therapy. And when that improves, Metabolic syndrome improves, cardiovascular disease goes down, clotting goes down, and the patient is overall healthier. Wow, just from a green laser. Now there's of course nutritional things you can do to support this. I gave you just a little bit of information. I'm not gonna go through this too much about what C-peptide does. Um, I just wanted you to know that we're measuring this and we're noticing this, that C-peptide and insulin resistance is improving with the observance of our green laser. We will eventually have enough information to do studies to say this. Green laser may indeed may be a treatment for insulin resistance that's turning into diabetes. Wow, how cool would that be? Not only that, if the sugar is turning into fat and that's accumulating around your liver and you're getting fatty liver disease, is there a possibility that green laser could treat fatty liver disease, which is big in alcoholics? There are so many things that we're looking at. We're not destroying tissue. It's not invasive. It's very safe, but the efficacy is good. And now we're seeing things beyond the efficacy that we've already proven. So C-peptide will look at all kinds of things. It'll look at you know what's going on with medications, with type two diabetes, Listen, if you have renal failure, please be careful. You may not get the results that you have or that you want. And if you get hypothyroidism, it's again, gonna be difficult. If somebody has cirrhosis because of alcoholism, please don't give them assurance that they're going to just become perfect all of a sudden. This can be something that is very devastating depending on the degree of liver damage the patient has. So I like to give the good components, Okay, 
I'll say this, the good components of green laser, but then also what you might want to look for that will give you some components of like, ah, I'm not so happy with that. If you have insulin resistance, be careful. If you have hypothyroidism, be careful. If hormones are really out of whack, be careful. I, and if somebody's under extreme stress, be careful. I showed you what the body will look like if any of those hormones are involved so that you can test each one if needed, or you can just simply look at them and say, this looks like a cortisol pattern. This looks like an insulin pattern. This looks like a testosterone pattern. That has been so helpful. Our, our regular lay staff, the people who are non-educated in regards to medicine, they understand very, very, very well what a body type looks like and what hormones or aspects of physiology may be involved. And they can tell us that and we're like, okay, cool, let's run the labs. And if we find it, we can maybe correct it. Or maybe the laser itself will make a difference. We do use, there's peptides are the big thing. There's semaglutide. Many of you have heard of this. It's a GLP-1 inhibitor. And I've put on here kind of what it does. And I think the notes will be available for review. You can look at this. But these have become very, very popular. Just be careful of things like this gastroparesis, pancreatitis, and also losing muscle mass. Also with laser, make sure that they're exercising and not losing muscle mass. If you don't do this, you know, these GLP-1 medications or peptides, sometimes in really stubborn patients will use them so their insulin resistance will go down, they'll lose their metabolic syndrome, and they will get results that are tripled, if not doubled, the effect of what the laser would do itself. So yes, we have green laser, it works awesome. But in some patients that are really stubborn, we do use some peptides at times, and they do even better. What's cool is we have also GLP-1 and GIP medications, okay? The best peptide is terzipatide. Rather than semaglutide, we use terzipatide. And terzipatide is a little more expensive, but it controls the release of insulin, so your insulin resistance goes down along with the green laser. Um, it helps with post-meal glucose control. On a lot of our patients, we put a, a two-week glucose monitor on their arm that goes right to their cell phone, and it tells them what their blood sugar is doing so they can understand what they're eating and what it's doing while they're in the laser and doing laser therapy. It's been amazing. So sometimes we use glucose monitoring with a lumen that tells us you blow into it and it says you need more protein or you need more glucose or sugar. And then sometimes we do hormone regulation. If you put all these things together, there's virtually no way the patient will not. I say no way. It's 95% the patient will not get results that you want. And we know that the green laser satisfactory percentage is 98%. The amount of inches is around six inches in regards of total loss. We don't use it. We don't have FDA clearance for pound or weight loss because sometimes people lose circumference but they increase body mass so the amount of weight they lose is neutral but the circumference has changed okay so sometimes we use GLP-1 peptides sometimes we use GIP peptides those are pretty much available throughout the globe so if these are messed up then it's going to lower stomach acid clearance it's going to lower nutrient ingestion. It's going to have an impact on the heart. It's going to have an impact on diuresis of the kidney. We found that it has an impact on the brain, the liver, and of course, adipose tissue. We can use green light and some of these peptides, GLP-1 and GIP medications, to really take the green light, which empties it, and then further finishes the job in regards to emptying it green laser with peptides is absolutely amazing always watch your pancreas and always watch your stomach and make sure that you don't get gastroparesis with these here's the names of some of these i use tirzipatide quite a bit 
semaglutide is the medication Ozempic. If somebody's losing muscle mass, you can use ipamorelin or ceramorelin. And if somebody has joint pain, you can use something called BPC-157. Now I'm throwing this in there as a bit of a, a little bit of a, an audible or, or alternative to what we were just talking about. We have green laser and what it does, but sometimes we will combine it with some other things to enhance what we're doing. With most of our patients, we're using HMB and we're using berberine and we're using exercise and meal planning. This is what we you know, typically do and I'll show you what that does. So HMB is something that bodybuilders have been using for years to maintain body mass. And it's the metabolite of an essential amino acid. This is leucine, and it really promotes, you know, muscle metabolism or proliferation or maintaining muscle. People who took HMB on a regular basis in nursing homes had about a 400% reduction in muscle mass loss. So if you were losing weight very quickly, we give people HMB and they maintain their muscle mass without having you know, to give them testosterone and so forth. Simple berberine is so cool because it does everything that the GLP-1 medications or peptides use or do. And you know, so if you can't give the peptide, we just you know, simply give berberine. There's a, a product um, from the company Zymogen called Berberine ES5. And the reason why it's called ES5, it's a very absorbable version of it. And it works just like some of these other peptides do. So it's very simple. It's very easy to use. Berberine works really well on insulin resistance and goes really well with the green laser. So we use Berberine a lot of times with green laser. Works fantastic. And again, we use HMB with the green laser. It preserves muscle mass. And then really, we a lot of times just use, we give people their essential you know, amino acids so that they maintain muscle mass. So I can give HMB and essential fatty acid, uh, essential amino acids and maintain muscle mass. And then I can give berberine on top of that with the green laser and it will decrease insulin and leptin resistance. Just two things, so simple. Green laser with some nutrition, with some diet, with some exercise, with some lymphatic massage, and with some hydration, your patients are gonna get better. Most, I mean, the vast majority of time. So really in summary here, here's what we got. I, I do 12 to 16 sessions. You know, usually over the course of about three to four months, we look at their body type and we say, wow, these hormones might be involved. What are we keying in on? We use a STIKU rather than regular measurements. And it's uh, a laser based system where they're put on a platform and it does all their biometrics. And we do before and afters. I showed you some pictures of that. We have a health coach that sits down and says, you got to quit eating this. You need to eat this. Your diet should involve more ketogenic versus paleogenic versus you know, plant-based. The dietary coach or coaching gives a person a diet that is really realistic to them. If it's really stubborn, we give peptides, especially if they're close to diabetes. And if they are, then we do that because we know that it's gonna be maybe a little bit more difficult. I told you about the supplements, the HMB, and just the good old fashioned, you know, basic amino acids. You have to sleep. If not, your cortisol is going to become screwed up. And if your cortisol is screwed up, I already showed you what kind of body distribution it's going to give you. And if you're postmenopausal or andropausal, I already showed you what the hormone distribution will look like. It's always nice to get a picture of their parents. You have to keep them hydrated. If you don't keep them hydrated, this doesn't work. We have a lymphatic massage specialist. Some people use pneumatic lymphatic components. So they'll put them on the patient and it squeezes them and it moves the triglycerides away from the adipocytes or fat cells. I like lymphatic massage, it works really good.
So really consider six months for results and give a reasonable time frame and tell them there's no hurry. And make sure that when you're using green laser, you're teaching them how to live a healthier lifestyle. That's what this is all about. The laser is basically a mechanism of them losing stuff rapidly and not losing hope, but at the same time, you educate them so that they don't get disease and die sooner or get other comorbidities. And when you do that, you'll see fat percentage change, body morphology change, comparative measurements change, and the patient gets better. And I haven't destroyed any tissue. There's been no invasiveness. I got rid of the submuscular fat, the brown fat, the visceral fat, the gynoid fat. Nobody else can do that. Our device is half the price as the other devices. There's no heat involved. So people aren't going to walk away with skin damage. When you look at this, it only takes one to two patients per month, per month, to make the payment on the machine. Everything else is profit. And the average person that's doing this is getting around eight patients a month. When you do that, there is really an average of anywhere from five to $15,000 a month in profit. I challenge any of you, we did this in the first month that we had an Emerald. I now have four of them. If you can find any franchise where the first month you make this kind of profit, you should do it. Otherwise, this is an really an easy win. But not only that, it's putting the patient first and their health first. So if anybody wants to look at a testimonial, you can always go to this website. This is not self-promotion, but this is one of the companies that we use. And you can see the patient that I showed you, you can see an interview with her on there and her experience as she goes through an emerald-based treatment protocol, a couple of things to help her thyroid out, and that's really about it. We did some supplements. She, of course, exercised and she followed some dietary advice, which I think is realistic. And overall, this patient didn't just lose six inches, but they lost up to 19. So I hope that you're getting a little bit of education about laser based therapy, its safety, its efficacy, its research, what it's doing to physiology, how it's changing people's lives and how it's giving us the time to educate that patient. And this right here is everything. Because if they can lead that, all these sessions, and they feel and look better, and you've educated them, they will keep these habits for the rest of their life. If not, they will typically fall off the wagon and gain their weight back. And in our studies, only about 12% of the patients actually after two years regained their size, even if we didn't educate them. So that is pretty much me running the gamut for about an hour. I hope that all of you were a little bit informed. If you're doing any kind of cosmetics, this is just a gimme. You can do this on chins, you can do this on face, you can do this on abdomens, you can do this on hips, you can do it everywhere. I showed you the body types. You can look at it and say, this looks like a cortisol dominant or cortisol patient versus an estrogen patient, you know, versus testosterone versus insulin and so forth or thyroid. If you can, you can check those things out. If you need to correct them, that's fine. It will possibly help your results. But what we're finding is we have endocrine problems and then we have green light. Green light is not only helping fat, but it's making differences on the endocrine problems. And then if we change the endocrine problems, it further enhances this. Sometimes we use peptides in the middle, and sometimes we use dietary in the middle, supplements in the middle, and then of course, nutrition in the middle. If you can get all of this down, which is not difficult, it took us three months to make our program. And once we did that, we were jamming, making money, helping patients, changing the world, and everything that we wanted to do with Green Laser was becoming possible. So right now, I'm open for any questions. Thank you so much for your time. I hope this helped you out in regards to understanding 
why Arconia is different than other lasers, why Arconia is different than other modalities, and why we have a lot of things to look forward to in the future in regards to decreasing possibly diseases that could cause, you know, or other comorbidities that, you know, co comorbidities that could cause disease. So right now, open for questions if we have Thank any time. Thank you very much, Mr. Brendan. Yes, I've got I've got a few questions, not a lot though. Uh, there is a one question from a lovely lady over in Switzerland, Kirsten Kemper, who works with the Emerald Laser. And her question is, how about if someone had the thyroid removed and takes medication, what does that mean for the emerald treatments? As long as their thyroid levels are stable, it, their body should just see it as a normal thyroid. It usually has nothing to do. It, it, as long as the, the TSH is stable and the T4 and T3 are stable, it should be, it should be awesome. It shouldn't have an impact at all. Thank you. Um, I've got another question. Um, do you do lymphatic massage or vibration play directly after each emerald session? Yeah, we do vibration 100% after every single patient to vibrate the triglycerides away from the adipocyte in which they came from. We do use, we do have somebody that does lymphatic massage. We like to do lymphatic massage because we feel like it helps the lymph remove the contents of the fat cells. We also use some binders, guys. We use bentonite clay, we use charcoal, or we use trisalt after every treatment so that any kind of really, because fat accumulates a lot of toxins. So when you release or dump the toxins, we like to bind them. So we do use some binders on our patients as well. Okay, thank you. Um, will single first session offer any visible changes to the patient? That's a great question. So you do a single treatment and more than 50% of the time you're going to see a change. Now, if you see any of the body types where it looks like there's a major hormonal contribution, you may not see the change that you want, so you have to address this, and then you go back and do it again, and now you see the change that you want. Now, that is our observation, and you know my job here is to be truthful. It's not to just promote a device, it's to be truthful. So most of the patients that are actually healthy, and they just have subcutaneous fat, it's easy. But if they have other comorbidities, a lot of hormone problems, and so forth, we may not see those single session results. And so we have to kind of go back and look at it and say, what distribution do they have and what do we need to treat and what do we need to look for? And when we do that, we get our single session results. That's perfect, thank you. Can Emerald be used for BMI above 40? And if so, there is any specific protocol? Okay, so above 40, we use, we, use it above 40 but it's not really a, the studies weren't done above 40 you just have to say this it's going to take probably more time it may take more money and it may take more sessions and you may have to do a little more exercise and you've got to work on your diet and the biggest thing is we have to figure out why you got above 40 in the first place. There is another question. In patients with lipoedema, can emerald be used? I haven't found good results with lymph edema. So if you have lymph edema, I haven't we haven't used it for that because that's all you know a significant condition that really deals with the lymphatic channels. If you have a lipoma, we have seen some lipomas reduce in size, but typically if there's a lipoma, we surgically remove it. Okay, we'll move to our next question. Is it realistic to expect good results with less session like six to nine if there is no need for significant weight loss? Yeah, we have some people that come in, they just wanna get 
like we've had some people come in they just want to tune up because they're going to a wedding and they want to be able to fit in their clothing a little bit better and look a little bit better or they want to go to the beach and look a little bit better we do anywhere from two to six sessions they look the way they want we change their diet a little bit and they're happy and that's the way they do it and you know we sell it in different packages or per sessions you can set that up however you want um we also have you know some executive you know packages where you get lab work and supplements and so forth the beautiful thing about this is you can set it up however you want it's your business so if you want to do 12 sessions fine 16 sessions fine eight sessions that's great by the session that's fine they all make money and if you do it the right way they all get results Okay, next question. Have you tried the emerald with acoustic wave therapy, shock wave to help with cellulite? So we're talking about the adjunct therapies alongside the emerald laser. We have used some other therapeutics with our emerald to see if a combination of other modalities works. And what we have found is it did not make much of a difference. Um, as a matter of fact, we took some of those other modalities and just got rid of them because it didn't make as much of a difference. Now, when you're looking at some of the shockwave therapies and if you're looking at green light, green light at the at the two hertz setting is very good for peripheral nerve damage and also for bone growth. So sometimes we'll use other modalities for peripheral nerve damage or bone growth, but we typically don't use other modalities um, with fat loss. What is the best way to use emerald for fibro fatty gynecomastia? Well, with gynecomastia, I would say, first of all, if, especially if it's on a guy, make sure they're not taking steroids. And a lot of times if a guy's taking steroids and they're not taking an aromatase inhibitor, they'll aromatize into estrogen and they get gynecomastia. With those patients, we send them out for surgery. We don't we don't really treat those individuals. Um, if somebody has gynecomastia in its true form, we send them out to the appropriate plastic surgeon. We don't really, we haven't really tried to do therapy on gynecomastia at this point. Gynecomastia is pathological. And one, the last question here is, will Emerald take care of laxity after treatment or we need to combine with other devices? I'm assuming that means laxity of skin. One of the things that we have noticed is this, the tensility or strength of the skin has improved significantly with green laser therapy. So we don't have as many stretch marks and we don't have as much saggy skin, especially if they lose a significant amount of size. So that's been one of the things that's been very beautiful is what it does for cellulite and what it does for skin tone. Now there are some superficial skin tone um, solutions that work pretty well. You can do whatever you want with that, but we found that it has been very beneficial. It may not get rid of all of it, all of it if they lose a lot of weight, um, they still might need surgical procedures if they're losing 60 or 70 pounds, but we have found that people have been happy with their skin elasticity and stretch marks afterwards uh, compared to some of the patients that just lose weight and they don't use laser. Thank you. Uh, and then another, I think this will be the last question. It's quite, it's quite interesting questions, quite good, and we've been asked many times regarding this. So if you can help here just to explain to the uh, attendees more. Uh, is it more helpful to adjust the time of the laser, for example, 30 minutes only on one side, like front of the abdomen? So 30 minutes in one, on one side, in one position. That's a good question. Sometimes we have people, I just told you, we have, that have more back fat than abdominal fat. So we may adjust the times. But one of the things that we've been doing on some of our patients is instead of laying them on their back and then on their front, we lay them on their side. And then we put the laser around the front and the back and we can get closer diode approximation to where we wanna go. So it would be really interesting to just show you a positional lecture on how we use it sometimes and how we use it on the chin. But 
don't forget you can lay people on their sides and then put the diodes over the front and diodes over the back and you don't have the distance and you can really focus in on an area and do not forget the fact that some people's circumference is more on the back than on the front okay so it's it, it, the machine doesn't really have the capacity to differentiate time on side one versus side two but sometimes we may just do two sessions on the back and then we may give them one session on the front and you know sometimes we do that for our patients where we give them a little bit more therapy and you know we're doing it for the patient we know that they need more on one area than the other and we want them to stay symmetric ultimately we don't really lose much money on doing that by offering them an extra click and they're happier which means they refer, refer more patients in and we ultimately you know have a better practice so yeah don't forget to experiment with this in regards to patients laying on their side rather than just the back and the front it's really pretty interesting what you can do with it perfect thank you very much it was really insightful webinar um i would like to thank you dr brandon for hosting this webinar tonight we are running slightly over our time and and for those also who have attended the webinar just remember the recordings of this webinar will be sent over to all the registrants so if you have any further questions please let us know have a great evening and thank you for tuning in thanks everybody <laughs>